Inertial relief can now be used in linear static simulations to simulate dynamic events as if they were in a state of perpetual equilibrium. Without inertial relief, it would be extremely difficult to get accurate stress results on free-moving objects like the conrod of this jackhammer. To set up the simulation, add bearing loads representing the forces on each end of the part. Make connectors help to define the direction of those forces at a particular moment in time and can be easily adjusted to get further results for analysis. However, the status of the simulation is still in error, stating that more instances or inertial relief are required. This can be found in the simulation panel under the current simulation. Inertial relief uses Onshape's modal analysis to consider the rigid body modes of the assembly and applies the proper restorative loads to bring it into equilibrium with the applied loads. The linear static analysis is then run using the combination of those applied and restorative loads. The result is an accurate simulation of the stresses acting upon the conrod at this moment in time, including the direction of deformation, the safety factor, and more. Inertial relief makes Onshape simulation even easier to set up and use. The documents page has been completely redesigned for improved usability and efficiency. Folders and documents are now displayed in a more compact layout, allowing more content to be visible on screen. Thumbnail previews have been reduced in size, but can be enlarged on hover for better visibility. Documents and publications are now grouped together in a single panel, but can be filtered to show one, or the other, or both. Projects and folders are also grouped together in a panel that can be resized, collapsed, and expanded, and shown in list view or grid view. An additional column for description can be added, making it easier to navigate through the folder structure. Similar to structure view, document view and list view now support customizable columns. Columns can be reordered in the dialog or simply dragged on screen, then resized and pinned, ensuring key data remains visible while scrolling left or right. List view and structure view retain their familiar layout but are now always presented in compact mode. A new column for material has also been added. Search results follow the same column formatting as the document view with description and type, making the data easier to read and understand. Frame profile and sheet metal form libraries can now be easily categorized by standard, type, or application by creating a folder structure up to 10 levels deep. Each folder in the library has a label. This label will appear in the frame and form features when navigating through the options to make the right selection clearer and easier to understand. To add a label, select the folder, go to the Properties panel, enter a value and click Apply. The last folder in each category must contain documents with either a single part studio or multiple part studios. Since multiple part studios presents the user with a further choice, those documents must also have a label. Back at the top level, update the library to reflect the changes and build the menu structure, including the new labels and Part Studio thumbnails. Now when adding a frame or a form, a custom library will show the top level folder structure with the label assigned to the library, the next level of folders with their assigned label, and the last folder showing a single Part Studio document and a multi-part studio document which shows the options available and the assigned label. This new library folder structure will make categorizing frames and forms much easier. This animation, created using a custom feature, requires some additional parts to make it work. For instance, there's a hidden part which is there to keep the gripper running along a straight line. There are many instances where managing how parts and items appear in the bomb is critical. 
Subassemblies can be set to hide all their components, which is ideal for bought in items. The properties of individual parts and subassemblies can be set to exclude from all bombs, and these will not appear in any bomb anywhere. But there are two instances of this block one at the top level and one in a subassembly, and only the top level block is required. In the subassembly, clicking Show Excluded Suppressed shows the floor has been excluded from all bombs and the timeline parts have been excluded programmatically by the custom feature. Now it is possible to suppress an item from the current bomb only, but the part needs to be a direct child of the current assembly. To ensure only the direct children of the assembly are selectable, go to the structured view of the bomb. Now you can right click and suppress from this bomb. An asterisk next to the item indicates that the part is only suppressed at this level. Switching back to the top level now shows a quantity of 1 and an asterisk to indicate that the part is partially suppressed from a subassembly. This part can now be used in other assemblies but is only suppressed here, giving you more flexibility when managing complex bombs. Complex assembly drawings with bomb tables and balloon callouts can be difficult to navigate. Hovering over each item in the bomb table now highlights the corresponding part and balloon on screen. This is particularly useful for stacked balloons, making it clear which balloon refers to which parts. Also when the same part is called out multiple times. When a part or subassembly has no associated balloon, this can be easily seen and rectified. Cross highlighting also works with frames and cut lists to help check that the drawing is complete. In enterprise settings, there's a new option for managing task workflows. The default task workflow is shown in a graphic explaining the standard task lifecycle from creation through to completion. Custom task workflows can also be created. Currently, Tasks are limited to three states, draft, open and complete, but additional fields and required inputs can be configured to suit specific processes. A task is created in the usual way, either from the action items panel or from within an on-shape document, and a task name, description and assignee must be set. Additional lists or checkboxes can be added to the properties panel on the right. In this workflow, the task type must be set during task creation. Once the task is assigned, the work can start. An additional field has been added to this workflow to provide observers with more information about the status of the task. When the task is started, it can be set to In Progress and comments added along the way. As the task progresses, this can be updated or the task set to complete once done. Tasks in Onshape provide a robust, built-in mechanism for managing complex design projects. The revision scheme in Onshape Enterprise can now control the revision of items synchronized with Arena. When a change order is created in Arena and a release candidate is created in Onshape, metadata is now synchronized in both directions. Part numbers can be generated by Arena based on category and if the change order is set to allow manual revision entry, the revision value of the individual items created in Onshape can now drive the revision value of the items in Arena. This ensures that there are no discrepancies between CAD, PDM and PLM, with Onshape Enterprise controlling the revisions. Stylized views in Render Studio can be used to simplify a scene, useful for creating images for maintenance and instruction manuals. The custom rendering style now has two new options to adjust the appearance of tangent lines, edge angle or the angle between surfaces and edge angle smoothness which controls the intensity of the edges. Setting this to a low value makes tangent edges visible. Adjust both values to get the required look, either hard edges or a more subtle result. 